Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages across all nations, races, and denominations, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today, back from Pennsylvania, bringing you guys and gals Bleach Chapter Reviews. Today, Bleach Chapter 647 Review. If you haven't seen the live reaction, which I'm pretty sure you already have, but if you haven't seen it yet, in this corner, write your annotation as well as a link in the box below. Now, this week's chapter, or well, I can't say this week's, this chapter of Bleach is a very simple chapter from a structure standpoint, but it is the ending that has the Bleach fandom massively stoked for the upcoming chapter. The hype is real. Now, we've all been waiting for this. Where is Bankai? Where is Bankai? Ugh. The Bleach fandom has been salivating for generations. And Taite Kubo stands and delivers upon the Bleach fandom, Kira who's Bankai. And everyone is stoked. The Japanese name is the Katen Kyokotu Kurumatsu Shinju. The English translation of that is the Secret of the Heavenly Blossoming Madness Black Pine Double Suicide. Now, it's it's a pretty intense name. Like, whoa. Like, just the name alone is like, yo, motherfuckers are going to die in waves. But, no, no. There's only two opponents. Or there's only one opponent. That's it, that is uh, Baro. But can Baro actually... Well, you know, he should be able to. But I was going to ask, can Baro actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Bankai? But he should, because Baro is intangible. He has these crazy powers going on. But Kyoku's Bankai has been hyped for eons to be, like, fucking phenomenal. To the point where he couldn't even, he couldn't even use it against Aizen, because there are too many folks around. Like, oh my god. What we see so far, from a visual standpoint, is, number one... He stabs his two katana on the ground, and a shadow protrudes from the katana. It looks like the top of a tree, like a like a piney tree. That's the way the shadows kind of structure. And then there is a woman that is holding, like that is pr pretty much on his shoulders. So what my assumption here is this, all right? When it comes to the woman on his shoulders, that I think is the more interesting part. The shadow I think coincides well with his powers because we knew that he can control the shadows already. He was using Shadow Clone, he can attack from the shadows, so sh so seeing the Shadow Pine tree is not all that surprising. It's the woman, the silver on his shoulders, that's surprising. Which we can assume, for the time being, is the manifestation of his Bankai. And my assumption is that when it came to a previous chapter, we saw a panel of a girl holding his hand when he was talking about children's games. And his, bon his Shikai is based on children's games. So my assumption is that his Shikai was a little girl. And that little girl grew up when he, you know, called upon his Bankai. And it's kind of like Ichigo Zanpakuto, but only in reverse. Like, the previous way Zan gets to a structure, I should say. So, that's my assumption. And that may correlate with his powers for Bankai. Which means that instead of having... You know, kids' games now. The now is gonna be some adult games, which I'm not too sure that would, that would entail exactly. But expect some jigsaw level shit. I mean, let, let's let's keep it real here. All right, I I think that we're going to see some really fucked up shit where Baro has to abide by really like strict hardcore rules, like not some kitty, you know, like not some fifth grade shit. All right, some grown man shit. And the problem is that even though Baro's intangible, if he breaks the rules, the rules still apply to him and therefore he would die in the process. So something like that. But so very similar to his Shikai, but just souped up. And the AoE is far greater. Like the, see, and that's the main the reason why he didn't use it in the first place, because the AoE. So when he says to himself, I hope Nano Chan's not in the vicinity, it's because his AoE is really big. His AoE probably encompasses like the entire city. So my assumption here is that everybody within a certain vicinity is going to have to play by these rules. And if they don't play by the rules, they're fucked. Now, what that means for him specifically, I'm not too sure. Because my another assumption that I have for his Bankai is that his Bankai has a direct backlash on him. That's my assumption, but I can't be too sure about that. Now, obviously, we'll see this happen in the near future, but moving on to other things in the chapter. First of all, seeing Baro, 
how he operates in this new shtick, holy form, how he can not only be intangible, but also he can do some like weird warping thing where he, like Kyoku's running away and he wound up like warping in front of Kyoku, like some weird spout thing. It, it kind of reminds me of um, Butterfly Aizen, where he would like disperse and like reform like near Ichigo every time he like move around. So it's kind of something like that. But just different, where it's like a spiral, like like he's getting like sucked out of like some weird spiral thing. It's weird. But he has some, you know, new movement that, you know, applies to his new powers. He's intangible, even from keto-based attacks, so they don't work on him. And that pretty much is the scope of his powers. Now, we're going to see more, obviously, because Kargu's Bankai is going to force him to actually utilize more techniques and whatnot. But so far, he's looking very, very powerful. Also, in the chapter, is now... The miracle, finally. All right, the guy that I really want to see the most among all of the We Dem crew, he was the one I wanted to see the most. And seeing how his cape could like flutter out like a bat wing, and how he's able to block the advance of Rako Shinji, I'm like, yes, this is gonna be a good fight. All right, just seeing the intensity in the eyes and his personality too, like it really gets me pumped up. Like, yeah, like this guy, he, he's already stood and delivered. All right, but he's giving us even more shit now, and I'm stoked. So, even though this fight is going to be pretty good with Kyaku and Baro, I don't want this battle to end up like Myri and Perninda, where it's like two months straight of just pure combat. Now, again, I'm not saying that it's going to be a bad battle. It's just that now that we have the Miracle set up to actually go into combat against several, against several Shinigami, and plus, it's Rukia and Renji there as well, who've gone through, you know, the training in the Royal Palace with the Royal Guard. And the miracle is still like, you guys, all of you have to fight against me. Not just Rukia and Renji souped up, all of you. I'm like, bro, I'm, yeah, I, that's what I want to see. So, like, again, it's going to be a good fight. Between Kiraku and Baro. At least, I, at least I hope so. But I really want to see the miracle right now. So Kubo basically set up one battle for the future. And the other one is reaching like a climax point. So overall the chapter. Because that's really it. Overall the chapter. I think it's a great setup chapter. I'll leave it at that. So King Lightning. Rate the video. Comment and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice goddamn day.